And that little glass globe in there, it seems to, wait a minute, it seems to be growing. It's getting larger. Oh my God, it's alive! It's alive! Trail to the flag football field, that's what they call it. This, is, this right here is known as the chapel. Heard oh, some wow. ghost stories about this area over here at night. Wait, do they tell ghost stories? Or have oh, we do them? tell ghost stories here. On top of, we heard local legend of this area right here. That's my pillow! That's cool. I have that pillow! But yeah, this is where they'll do church services actually too. Really? Yep, okay. hence the name the chapel. And obviously right here, of course this, this has been around for a long, long time. So, so there's a summer camp, I believe they used to have, this is where they would do church services on Sundays. But supposedly, there's a legend that here, if you're here at a certain time at night, you'll see your red glowing eyes and you hear voices and then you may even feel a quick stab. Supposedly, supposedly. This was secondhand information passed on to me, so. So we'll continue this way to the flag football field. Well, here's our tagline, an indoor con with outdoor fun. And this is the flag football field. This is where you do like the bigger events. And up there is the uh, Roskin Main Lodge. We were up there before mm -hmm. when you did the con men panel. We were straight up that way in that room. And then we had the Main Lodge, which is that circle room. A lot of panels are done in there. And it also doubles as a place for people to stay. Those are actually cabins in there too. That room up there is actually a bathroom up there. And then over there, we have the yurt huts. And those are small little rooms. One yurt hut is used for a cabin because there are beds and things in there. And the other two are used for activities and panels. Oh, it looks like we have an activity. I think this was left over from Cosplay Human Checkers, Ooh. I want to say. Was this last night? I think this was earlier today, actually. Oh, it looks like I forgot to bring my, uh, yeah, I think I forgot my, my con book back at the, uh, Oh, thank you very much. So let's see, I think this was the, there's so many things in here. And it's around, Cosplay Checkers. This was Cosplay Checkers, live in the flag football field. And now we're at Saturday, we're around the one o'clock time. 
So we got the Lava live action video amusement. Two to four people will act as video game characters while their controllers will take advice from the audience on how to attack and defend. Ah. So there's a lot of stuff going on today. In fact, there's one, two, three, four, five, six other panels or activities going on as this one is about to uh, take place. Now, now we're involved in this I guess so. Let's find out who's, uh, who's in charge of this. Oh, hi. I'm J.G. Hertzler. I'm having a little ramen here. It's a uh, cola flavor. There's lots of flavors. But this is the one I like. It's one of my favorite drinks. And let me just show you how to open it, because it's not as complicated as you might think. You see this thing right here? Now I'm going to separate these two things, detach it. We place the downside, the little cylinder, right over that glass globe that's in there. It's actually a marble. But right now, I'm ready for a cool, fresh drink of ramen cola flavor. So I just press this down as hard as I can. And guess what? I have a cool, refreshing drink of ramen egg cola flavor for those hot summer days. Yeah, I thought it was Hi, I'm Hitomi, Hitomi Himekawa. I'm here and uh, just finished a show in Camp Anime. It's nice. I love here. Camp Anime is amazing. I did archery, I did like rock climbing. I'm gonna do boating. Ooh. There's no boats, <laughs> but yeah, um, um, I am an artist, um, I write songs and I sing and dance and uh, my goal is to um, write more like kawaii, mean cute and energetic songs for, uh, for young people. The choreography, I hire uh, Saoli, which is a Japanese uh, choreographer, to do it for me. And uh, of course, I was supervising it. It's like technically, we make it up together. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, it's the dance is for my original songs. So uh, it's it's really it could be really simple, but if you want to do it right, it's a lot of technique there. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Where could we find your music? Um, Reverberation. He told me Himekawa. Oh, very good. Excellent. Uh, one more thing. Can you say your name and you're watching Kanmen? Okay. He told me Himekawa. I am watching Kanmen. All right. So, uh, how are you doing today? Good? I'm doing all right. Awesome. So, uh, what exactly do you do? Uh, my name is Clifford Chapin. I'm a voice actor. I've played roles such as Connie Springer on Attack on Titan, uh, Kaito Yashio on Robotics Notes. Um, Keita Suibuki on Good Luck Girl, Bimbo Gummy Ga, and a bunch of other various anime uh, throughout the uh, different anime worlds. Nice, so um, we had talked about Attack on Titan, and uh, you said that that was one of your favorite characters right now? It's definitely one of my biggest roles, and that uh, a lot of people seem to enjoy, and I like people enjoying it, so... Uh, that got huge really fast. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it was a big hit when it was in Japanese and the subtitled version was airing uh, and getting released on Funimation's website and such like that, and on um, Crunchyroll and other streaming sites, and uh, it got really, really popular. And then when we got to dub it, the fact that it managed to get onto Toonami uh, before the dub was available on DVD and Blu-ray uh, really helped get its popularity up. And it has, as far as I'm aware, been consistently like the highest rated show in its time slot for Saturday nights, which is pretty cool that when it's uh, for non-sporting events, which is pretty awesome. So now you talked about the dubbing. Um, in, in regard to the dubbing, because I've seen it in both English and Japanese, how do they get the characters' mouths to match up? Uh, that is a lot of meticulous work. Uh, we worry about the mouth flaps matching our wordings because we can't we can't go through and change the animation. The animation is stuck the way it is. And uh, so we have to make sure that the script is accurate to what the Japanese language says, what it said in the original version, because we don't want the audience to get a different experience watching it in English than how they had it in Japanese. So we have to, uh, they work really hard to adapt the script 
to stay true to that, but then also fit the timing of how the mouth moves. And uh, quite often we'll do lines that then don't fit in however many flaps we have, and uh, we'll have to adjust on the fly to make sure that it it all comes together and becomes a good product. But uh, it's uh, it's a pretty elaborate process that we we spend a lot of time focusing. on. Cool. Um, so real quick, mm -hmm. if a Titan were to ever come into, you know, like like let, let's say this camp, what would be the first thing you would do? Uh, I would. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I don't have any Titan slaying gear or training, so I don't really know how I'd be able to fight a Titan right now. But uh, I'd probably look for a safe place to try and get to, to get away, or just stay out of sight so it wouldn't ever get away. One thing I've noted about Attack on Titan is that the Slim, the slim Gear, and this is really cool, they explain it, how it all works. Mm -hmm. If they had the real life stuff, would you do it? I don't know. I feel like that would like dislocate a hip or something, the way that it works, but uh, I don't know, it's like skydiving. It's one of those things where it's like, it seems dangerous, but it seems like it'd be fun. Do I, I don't know if I'd want to do it. So. Okay, now what would you rather be? Would you rather be a humanite, or would you rather be a titan? Oh, I think I'd want to be one of the people that shifts into titans, because then I don't really have to choose. I could just kind of go one way or the other. That's so. cool, and you never, I mean, if you get eaten, you can just turn into a... Right, and then I'm set for any occasion, right? You know, like, oh, it's dressed formally. Well, I got that covered, so. That's cool, nice. Can you, um, how do you feel about, like, the second season? I know it's not even in the works, but they're already selling it. Um, I want there to be a second season. Um, the, the Attack on Titan first season stays really true to the, the manga, the right. comic book. Um, and if it stays in that way, the second season would have a lot of really good scenes with Connie um, that I'm aware of, and I would really like to portray him and get to play those scenes out. Um, so I want it to be a thing. I hope it is a thing in the near future, but um, as of right now, we don't have any indicator of when that's going to be a thing or if it ever will be. So. Okay, now real quick, you've done other voice characters as well. Yes, sir. Can you give us a little rundown on which ones you've done? Uh, there was Keita Suibuki in Good Luck Girl Be Mugami Ga was my first role with uh, Funimation. Then Kaito Yashio from Robotics Notes. Uh, Ichijo Takinagi from Red Data Girl. Um, Connie Springer on Attack on Titan. I play Heracles Combo in Bento. Um, and then I'm starting to lose the later ones. Uh, there's I play uh, Hamazura in Certain Magical Index. And um, I think that's the most of what's been announced right now. So I do have some more stuff on the horizon that I can't divulge just yet. Well, that's cool, and, and definitely uh, we wish you the best of luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, keep, keep, uh, keep up the excellent work, and we'll keep watching. Great, thank All you right. very much. Thanks for being our comment. No problem. All right, cool. Hi, my name's Greg Nugent. Hi, I'm Brittany Lotta. Hi, I'm Adam Tilford. I'm Kara Buckley. And I'm Clifford Chapin. And, and you're, you're watching Comment! <laughs> so we're here at the Boathouse, and we were just talking with J.G. Hersler. Famous character actor from Star Trek, from video games, voiceovers, very nice guy. Pleasure to meet him and chat with him for a while. Uh, I'd also like to introduce to you someone that does a lot of extra hard work around here. I call him the, he's the heart of Camp Anime. He's in charge of heavy lifting and of course dead animal disposal. If you find any dead animals in your cabin or just in the general camp area, John is your man because that's what he eats here. He cooks them up separately at the campfire later at night because he can't eat people food. My grandma, she makes the best dang gator gumbo I ever did see, I guarantee. Yes. So what's, what's the most interesting thing that you've ever eaten? Well, I think I had some uh, fried squirrel tail. It was pretty, uh, pretty disgusting. What did it taste like? Bones. Ooh. Lots of bones. Okay, thank you, Johnny. Uh, there's actually a dead skunk in cabin number five, so if you can go take care of that, that'd be great. Thanks, John. Cool. So, all right, it's time to go eat some lunch. Let's go. Uh, it's about making sushi and eating sushi, as you can see. The fish flavor. Fresh fish would be a fish that was just caught that day and you cut it and eat yes. it right away. Yes. Otherwise, you have to freeze it. 
That's why there's a common misconception when people go to uh, sushi places, they're always like, was your fish fresh? Can't be fresh, because if it was fresh, you'd be sick. <laughs> so it has to be frozen. We do get our fish fresh, but then we freeze them, you know, kills off all the bacteria, and then we defrost it. So it thaws out for the next day, and then we can use it. But it'll never be fresh, because if they do tell you, yes it is, run right far away. Yeah. Alright, then, same thing with the avocado roll. Bring it around. I don't know, the, my favorite, I guess, would be Toro, but tuna, tuna Toro, which Toro is like a fatty piece of the tuna. It's very delicious. It literally melts in your mouth. Hi, I'm Haruvam. Well, right now I'm being Kiki, but I'm Haruvam. Awesome, so now what's happening next? We're gonna have to cosplay fashion show right in there. The dining hall? Yes. Awesome, can you tell us a little bit about what, how it works? Well, how it works is basically people can show their fashion. It's not gonna be judged and then we're gonna ask a little bit like for in-character questions and we're gonna ask um, for what was, been, was, was hard to do for the costume and like maybe that other people can learn out of like progress make and all the stuff armor work excellent so how long mm -hmm. have you been cosplaying for because i know that you were in a previous episode of ours comic-con with two ends yeah. dressed up as the beaten up Catwoman. yeah awesome so how long have you been cosplaying i've been cosplaying since 1998. wow <laughs> so you should be excellent when it comes to doing the judging i try my best <laughs> All right, well, we'll see you inside. Okay, see you inside. Who are you today? Uh, I'm Garen from League of Legends. Oh, that's awesome. Can we check out your cosplay? Sure. Cool, can you turn around? Wow. Now, did you make this yourself? Uh, yeah, I did. How did you do it? Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of steps. Tell us how you made the sword. The sword? Okay, well, um, I started with this PVC pipe. Uh, you can kind of see it here. Yeah. Um, we uh, we made a stencil out of cardboard and then sprayed it on both sides with uh, expansion foam, which which then um, afterwards we carved out the expansion foam to look like the sword, and then we um, paper mache it, it, followed up by uh, a fast mache like wallpaper pulp, and then wall filler, and then we sanded that down to make it smooth. Nice. Now this this um, uh, how about like the robe and everything? The robe? Um. Well, say again? It's just cloth. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's just like a blue shirt and we uh, attach cloth to it. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> that's cool, nice. Now, are you here with some friends today? Yeah, I'm here with my girlfriend. She's okay. Ezreal from League of Legends. Oh, that's cool, nice. So you both are from League of Legends. <laughs> yep. Now, is that your favorite game right now? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an addiction. Yes. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> nice. All right, cool. Well, you guys have fun and uh, could you do one more thing? Sure. sure. Say, we love Camp Anime. <laughs> We love, we love camp, camp anime! anime. <laughs> um, this is the BB range. So during the summer they have classes all the time where the kids get to come down here. A lot of times they'll blow up balloons and water balloons and there's an apple out there. Sometimes we get some more fruit from the kitchen. Um, and so it's just a fun thing for the kids to do and it's a fun thing for you guys to get to come and do. And it's fun for us to leave. Nice. Wow, he got it that time. It's cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Are you going to try it? That's <laughs> great. Knowing me, it will somehow end up terribly. I have two things. I have two things. You're not getting one. It was hurt to get shot. Not that much. You get a little bit of a bruise. Got it for once. Yeah, I went, yeah, when, I, it fun. when I went BB gun with Brett, it was just, um, it was literally, it was just like, it was like a BB. I'm used to automatics. I don't have to do this every time. 
And uh, what is your name and company here? My name is Katie Reckamp and I run a company A plus C duct tape. Everything here is made entirely 100% out of duct tape, including my wallets up here. These are some of my favorites. Each of these is individually cut out. Those are individual, completely handmade. That's very impressive. How long does it take you to make one of these? It on takes average? a significant period of time. I spend a minimum of 40 hours a week restocking between events. Wow. And how long, uh, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Where do you get all this duct tape from? It takes a lot of hunting. Two cities. Mike Jack, hot mic, yeah. hot mic. It takes a lot of hunting to get all the different styles of duct tape. I've got a local store that I can put up to the clubs and the color things, but when it comes to stores, it takes a lot of hunting. That's what's got to be. My best seller. Um, it's probably p the pens because the pens are uh, Show me one of the are pens. nice. Where is the pen? This is a pokeball pen. Oh, very nice. Yeah, they're a nice, inexpensive uh, thing that you can pick up. They're great because I used to work at a desk job, and then people would steal pens by the handful. So yeah, definitely. Oh, I agree. So when you put something on the end, at least this way you can see it from a mile away when people try to walk off with it. I see. What? It I wasn't trying to steal there. this. What are you that about? doesn't fit. In your I, I was trying to see if it fit in my pocket for a uh, future purchase. Case of real. And it's also a really nice price point. This isn't an expensive convention, and it's really nice to go to. Also, the people here are really polite. There's a lot of really nice people who stop by. And one of my favorite things is that as an art vendor, I normally miss all of my favorite panels because it's in the other rooms and I got to sell stuff. But my favorite thing about Camp Anime is that you guys have panels going on in this room too. So I get to watch some of the panels too. <laughs> let me walk around for a little bit. It is nice though when you're close to some of the celebrities. At least then you yeah. can kind of say, hey, I saw you from that TV show. You're awesome. True, and if you have a couple celebrities near your table, you might get a little bit of the uh, extra that overflow. That too. Oh, yeah, what, what is your favorite anime, by the way? Attack on Titan, hands down. Absolutely. Really? No questions asked, Attack on Titan. That's my absolute That favorite. is like the hot one right now, Attack on Titan. I used to not really like anime very much. Please don't hate me. <laughs> but so I did, would, I did enjoy be, Pokemon uh, as a kid. That was yeah. a thing that I kind of got into. But Attack on Titan definitely reintroduced me to anime. Would you be a Titan or a Humanite? A human. I know that everyone wants to say that they're going to be in the Survey Corps, but realistically, nobody wants to join the Survey Corps. Now, what would you do if a giant titan attacked here at Camp Anime? I'd probably cry. I'd probably sit down and cry. That's God's honest truth. I would not be one of the brave ones. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, if, a, if a titan really came here, I would probably push you towards a titan so that I could escape. Oh no, I'd probably. No push offense. No offense. I'd do it to anyone here. You know. Theoretical scenario. One of those. Sorry, Leo. You're going first. I'm pushing you in. <laughs> Big job was a financial institution where I was able to do concept sketches that would end up on a pretty slick sign that's going to be put up. Um, but what we're going to talk about today is character design. A lot of the customers that come into my studio space, they'll have a base idea for um, a character that's going to either represent their business or themselves. So some of the customers that come in <coughs> are clients that are looking for something that kind of soften up their business image. Um, so like doctors or real estate agents, dentists, stuff like that. And then other people are for book, uh, book designs, and then comic books obviously, of course. But a lot of times I don't really have too much say on the front end. Like they'll come in and they'll like, oh I have a list of uh, characteristics that I want to achieve, but then beyond that, you know, they don't, they don't really have the next level of concept creation. So what I like to do is when they sit down with me, I like to create characters live with them. And in this way, they're involved in the actual creation process. And I work kind of quick. I, I believe in line forgiveness. So if you've done a gesture drawing or anything like that, I'm not worried too much about the mistakes. So when you say, you know, I don't draw, or I'm not into drawing, I don't even hear that. Because I, I want you to be okay with the lines that you put down, and I want you to be able to work with the lines that you put down and work with your, what you see. Because as an artist, if you can see that there's something that you don't like, you make the correction.
address it. It's the person who just throws their paper up in the air and says, I'm not gonna do this anymore. They're not the artists. We gotta fight through these challenges to be able to create what we see fit. Is it ever gonna be perfect? No, you're just gonna keep fighting and you're gonna learn. Like I'm still learning, you know, it's the continuous learning experience. But line forgiveness is really what it's all about. And what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is just a, a little fragment of a character design class that I like to do. Um, we'll do one experience, which is a lot of fun. I have a big paper that we'll tear up in half because I honestly thought we were gonna have more tables. Um, but what we'll do is we'll do a character design experience and then you're gonna do one. And then we're gonna do something really exciting, a little bit more difficult, but fun, I promise. So now what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do character trait shout outs, okay? And this is just gonna prove or show to you the kind of work that I do. And then we'll dovetail that into something that you can do on your own, right? We're gonna break this down to three simple uh, categories. We're gonna talk about character traits, okay? And we're just gonna list a couple of different, bless you, a couple of different characteristics. And then I'll try to design this character for you, all right? We're gonna break down to something simple as an occupation, an emotion, and a species. Okay, well the first two are easy, but I want to explain the third one, the species part. So for an, uh, an occupation, any kind of occupation. Carpenter. What? Carpenter. Carpenter? Okay. All right, the next thing, we'll, let's talk about an emotion. Somebody else, we'll give you a shout out for an emotion. Can we just put sad? For the interest of time and my embarrassment of spelling words. <laughs> Alright, and the last thing, species. Who wants to do the shout out for that? It's a big word, so anything. Somebody who didn't offer anything. anything. Hi guys. Hello. Why are you walking so slow? Walk, sit down. Come on. Anything, come on. Starting this family apart. We need a species. Oh, species? Cassidy. Monkey. Monkey. Great. Alright. I love it. Kiss you. All right, so the first thing, the first thing I'm going to start off with is the gesture, right? If you are familiar with drawing, this is the, uh, the core of line forgiveness. So you, if you've ever done uh, work with charcoal or anything like that, you understand this at its purest. All right, so I'm going to start off with my, my melancholy monkey. So you can see the base gesture here, and the point here is to start with the skeleton or the gesture and then build up using simple shapes and build over this, this poor little guy. basically help run things behind the scenes. Yep. And uh, chauffeuring people to the airport, airport and back. Also, I help with panels. I actually do my own panels, which is kind of neat because it kind of breaks things up. So I guess the I guess I'm kind of like a go-to guy with certain things. If something needs to be filled or something needs to be done, panels, you know, extra help with panels or just extra things going on in the show. So it's kind of like a job that not a lot of people see or know about. But that's pretty much what I do. Awesome. Now, what's your favorite thing that you did so far? Favorite thing this weekend was doing a panel with J.G. Herzog. Oh, nice. Why was that your favorite thing? It was my favorite thing because Star Trek has always been something that I've, I've liked as a kid. I grew up with it. So it's like kind of like sitting at the front with with Mr. Herzler was kind of neat and just talking about Star Trek and having different perspectives on it. So I, it was kind of a treat to be able to talk to somebody that I've seen on television as a kid, which is, you know, how many times do you get to actually 
run a panel with somebody that you grew up watching. It's not very often, so. That's pretty cool. So nice. Something that I, you know, I enjoy. It's something I've never really done before. I've never run a Star Trek panel or been involved with a Star Trek panel at, 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 at a convention. So it's my first, it's my first go.